Bib the Alien brought with him an alien riffic game, and that alien game is Alien for your Atari 2600. And it looks like something burst out the hole there. Wonder what it was. Oh well, sure it's nothing. Let's go ahead and take Alien, pop it in my Atari 7800 Pro system, and see how it holds up today. Let's go to the game. Do you hear something? Alien was published by 20th Century Fox and carries a copyright year of 1982. It is based on the popular 1979 movie. It was programmed by Doug Neuerbauer, who also designed the classic Star Raiders game for the Atari computers. However, on the game box and in the manual, he used the pseudonym Dallas North instead. According to the back of the box, after leaving your last planet, you've been hearing weird sounds in your Nostromo spaceship. When you go to explore the sounds in the maze-like hallways, you find gross eggs that you step on to squish, and a group of aliens. Looks like you're in trouble, buddy. And remember, in space, no one can hear you scream. But on a spaceship, I think they could. Alien is a Pac-Man-style game for one player only, and has four modes of difficulty. Normal, advanced, expert, and practice. When you start the game, you move your human. Yes, the manual calls your character simply a human. You move your human around with the joystick, walking over dots that represent alien eggs. Good thing that no one told them that smushing them may release acid that could burn through your boots. Shortly after the level starts, three aliens are released one at a time. There's also a pulsar in the maze which looks like a star. Touching this will temporarily weaken the aliens turning them blue and allowing you to run over them as long as they remain blue. Once you grab one pulsar, another will appear for a total maximum of three per maze. Similar to Pac-Man, there are also tunnels on each side that both you and the monsters can use. Pressing the button will activate your flamethrower for up to four seconds per life. However, using this is a bit buggy. You can't use a flamethrower on the far right or left screen, and they don't hurt aliens, but rather it might scare them off your tail, but not always. I found the flamethrower worked best when an alien was right behind me, and I fired the flamethrower in front of me instead of at the alien. It is a bit confusing and not very easy to use, but sometimes it does help. Occasionally, prizes will also appear in the middle of the screen for bonus points. Scoring wise, you get 10 points per egg squished, 100 points per pulsar, anywhere from 500 to 5,000 points per prize, 500 points for getting one blue alien, 1,000 for the second, and 2,000 for the third blue alien you get in a row after a single pulsar. You also get one whole point for clearing the screen. When the left difficulty switches in the B position, aliens travel in a fixed pattern, but in the A position, this is randomized. When the right difficulty switches in the A position, catching the pulsar will have no effect on the aliens. In between rounds is a tough but fun bonus round where you have 8 seconds to avoid being touched by the aliens and grab a prize at the top of the screen. 8 seconds, huh? This must have been inspired by some alien bull riding competition. You start the game with 3 humans in the normal mode and expert modes, 2 humans in the advanced mode, and 6 humans in the practice mode. In the normal and practice game, you get a bonus human after you complete the second screen. Graphically speaking, I like your guy in the blue maze, but I will admit the aliens look more like something that came out of the Thing movie rather than the Alien movie. I also thought that the sounds were decent and sounded more like a Pac-Man game than Pac-Man itself on the 2600. Family friendly wise, this is one of those games that even though it's based on a rated R movie, the game itself is pretty tame. At the time I researched on eBay, loose copies were going for $10 to $15 and one complete copy sold for $34 including shipping. So what did I think of Alien? I was really surprised how fun this game is. It's not perfect. The flamethrower mechanic doesn't work nearly as well as it should, but there were a few times it did help. The aliens don't look like the aliens from the movie, and the idea of turning Alien into a Pac-Man style game doesn't make much sense on the surface. But despite all of this, the game is fun. Your character moves well, which is essential for a maze game, and the aliens really kept me on my toes. As a matter of fact, if the flamethrower worked better, this game could have challenged Ms. Pac-Man for the best maze game I've reviewed so far in the 2600. So where am I going to rank Alien? Probably a lot higher than you'd expect. I like both California Games and Frankenstein's Monster better at 8 and 9, but even though I really enjoy Battlezone at 10, I enjoyed Alien just a smidgen more. So out of the 111 games I've now ranked on 2600, Alien is bursting into the 10 position. I probably like it more than most, but if you like maze games on the 2600, you should check out Alien. Just don't expect the flamethrower to help a lot. So what do you think of Alien on the 2600? Whether you agree or disagree with me, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Also, feel free to click the like and subscribe buttons, and if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon. Just go to patreon.com slash gamer for more information. You can also follow me on both Facebook or the Twitter, and I'm a member of the Retro Junkies Network. You can find more retro podcasts and videos at theretrojunkies.com. 
Thank you for giving me a little part of your day, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the next episode of the No Sword Gamer. Take care, and remember, in space, no one can hear you scream. But then again, is it even possible to scream in space?